There are certain mistakes GED test takers make that really hold them back from passing and really waste a lot of their time. And I'm gonna tell you what they are and how to avoid them in this video. My wife and I just moved from Philadelphia to Minneapolis. And of course we brought Tommy with us. We did have one casualty though. And that's Tommy's cat tree. And somehow in the moving end, the screws got loose. So we bought Tommy a new cat tree and today we're gonna put it together. All 72 inches of it. So one mistake that people make with their GED studying, and I see this a lot, is not starting with the basics. So don't try to move on to advanced stuff before you've built a foundation up. I gotta start by building the foundation. Another mistake is not taking the time to keep yourself organized. There are many things in life that you can't control. So do your best to take care of what you can. Here's a mistake that I see students make both during their practicing and on the real test. Giving up on problems way too soon. So I'm not gonna lie, these instructions have already confused me a couple times and I, I'm only on the second step. So next time you get stuck on a practice problem, ask yourself a couple questions. So number one, ask yourself if you ever solved a problem like this before. Now I put this cat tree together last year, so obviously I've done this before. When students get stuck on math problems or any problem on the GED, they're often missing some key concept. So ask yourself, what's missing? Why can't I solve this problem? On the other hand, there's definitely such a thing as taking too long to answer questions on the real test. On the real test, you never wanna to spend too much time on any one question. A great strategy when you come to hard questions is to take a shot at them, but don't spend too much time. Just guess one of the answer choices and mark that question. Then as you go through the easier questions on the test and secure every last point that you can, if you have time left at the end, Go back to the questions that you marked. There's no penalty for guessing on the GED. So if worst comes to worst, always guess. Never leave anything blank. So now I want you to see a huge time-wasting mistake that a lot of students make. And I don't want you to make it because you're going to drain the time down on your test if you do this. And also, you're not going to get the points that you could get. So I have here a basic example of an algebra type question where you'd have to solve for x. So if I ask you to solve a question like this for x, hopefully you'd know how to do it. Um, but if not, basically, when I say solve this equation for x, what I mean is you wanna get the x by itself on one side of the equation. So the way that you would do it is you would first add one to both sides of the equation, and that would give us two x equals 10, right? And so now, since we have two times x, we want to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we're gonna divide by both, we're gonna divide by two on both sides. So 10 divided by two equals five. So we'd see here that x equals five. So hopefully you already understand this. Hopefully this is pretty basic for you. Um, if it's not though, I have a video that covers solving equations more in depth. So I'll put a link down below. But I wanted you to see this because I want to show you the difference between this case and a whole other case. So some GED test takers will get a question like this, x squared minus 10x plus 16. And if I tell them to solve this, this equation, they'll try to do the same thing as what I was just doing. They're gonna try to rearrange it and try to get x by itself on one side, right? So you can try to set it equal to zero and you can try to you know subtract 16 from both sides or maybe add 10x from both sides. You can try to do that all day long, but you're never gonna get x because you can't solve it that way. All right, so what I want you to do is remember this right here. This is a quadratic equation, and this is the standard form of a quadratic equation. So whenever you see any number here, and the a could be any number, uh, but whenever you see an equation written in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where again, b could be any number, C could be any number, but whenever you see an, an equation that's written in this form, know that you can only solve that using one of three methods. You could factor it, you could use the solution to the quadratic equation, which is another formula, or in some cases you can look at the answer choices if it's multiple choice, and you can plug them in for x and you can try to solve the question that way. Another critical mistake that some students make is overworking themselves to the point where they burn out. It takes hard work to pass the GED, but you also wanna make sure that you take time to take care of yourself during the process. So I'm taking a break from the cat post to eat a little dinner here. One mistake is taking the test before you're ready. So right now, Tommy's on the new cat post before it's even done. Experience shows that there are two things you need 
to know that you're ready to pass the GED. Now remember that there's no guarantees here, but if you have these two things going for you, I'd say you have a good shot at passing. The first thing you need is a practice test score that says you're likely to pass on a GED ready practice test. The second thing you need is confidence. So once you've got that practice test score and you're feeling confident, I'd say schedule your test within the next week and go and get it done. You have a great shot at passing. Nothing will kill your progress faster than a lack of consistency. I've seen test takers get fired up and put in 10 hours of studying in one week, then do nothing for the next two weeks. And that's why their progress is up and down like a horse on a carousel. Any studying is better than no studying, but consistency is key. And just because you don't have a lot of time on a given day, don't overlook the power of short study sessions. So even if all you have on a certain day is 20 or 30 minutes to study, put that time to good use. This next mistake is definitely one of those do as I say, not as I do moments. And that mistake is complaining for the sake of complaining. Now, what I'm not saying is that you should just ignore your problems and not talk about your problems, but there's a difference between complaining just to complain and talking about your problems so that you can solve them. Although this thing's causing me some big problems right now. All right, this step's seriously confusing. Step four, take a look at that sucker. So I'm actually really confused right now. So here's another big math mistake, and I see students ask questions about this a lot in my videos. A lot of people get this confused, and I'm not 100% sure why, but I just want you to think for a second here. You don't have to actually get a calculator and do this. I just want you to think. If I gave you this question and I told you solve for X, how would you do it? Just think about it. Because what some people do is for some reason they think that you have to square 16. And that's actually incorrect. So what you have to do here, if we just want to get x, you have to understand that we have x squared here. Okay, so whenever you have any number squared, if you take the square root of it, you're just going to get that number back out, right? So x's are called the base. We have the base squared and you take the square root and that's just going to get us that base. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we actually, we don't square the 16. We want to take the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. Tommy, I mean, there's plenty of time to play later on. I'm trying to get this done for you, buddy. One of the biggest mistakes that people make with the GED is lack of patience. So let's say that you start a new workout routine, whether you're running or if you're lifting weights or yoga, whatever you're into. But let's say that you start a new fitness routine. You know that initially you might feel a little bit better, you might have some more energy, but you know that it's going to take a while to start seeing good results. And you know that from that point when you start that workout routine until you're getting really good results, you know that there's going to be a little period of time in there where you're not seeing any results. There very well may be a time with your GED studying when it doesn't look like you're making any progress, but you have to keep going, knowing that someday you're going to look back and realize how much progress you've made. I don't know, Tommy, I think I missed the screws up, so we might have to just donate this to the SPCA or put it in the dumpster, because I don't know how I'm gonna figure this out. So if you haven't been paying attention so far, now is really the time to do so. And I know I've covered some huge mistakes on this list already, but this is another really, really big thing. And this is really a mindset and a thought process error that some students have. And you really need to avoid doing this because it's really gonna hurt you. Uh, and that's trying to memorize your way through the test. So sometimes when students get practice tests or practice questions, they'll try to memorize how to do those questions. And they'll try to memorize sometimes even the answers thinking that it's gonna be the same questions on the test. And the bottom line though is that the GED is not a memorization test. It's a critical thinking test and it's a problem solving test. Doesn't matter what section it is, but especially for the math, uh, just memorizing how to do certain problems is not gonna help you. You have to understand the math basics really well and you have to be able to apply them to new scenarios and new problem 